And one of the most important things is looking for an effusion. And on the learn.physio website, Mick Hughes has uh, been through this uh, before, but an effusion, which is a, we do by assessing what we call a swipe test. And what we are looking at, relax, Joy, is we're looking at the dimple on the medial or inside part of the joint. And so what we're doing, and on a right lower limb, I will do this, which is sweeping the fluid up into the suprapatellar pouch. Now sometimes when I do that and I let go, the dimple will get fluid back into it. And that fluid back into it, without me having to push it back in, represents a large effusion. We don't know if it's a hemarthrosis or just synovial fluid or whether it's a lipohemarthrosis, just on the examination. We get that more from the history and also the imaging. Now for some people we'll do that and then we swipe down. And what we're doing is we're swiping that fluid back into that medial gutter. And that, if it bulges out, is a sign that there is an effusion there. And we need to know that in a normal knee, there's actually less or just on one mil of fluid. It only needs to be a cell layer thick to actually just sit on the articular cartilage. And so from that point of view, when we can actually palpate or see an effusion with a positive swipe, there's at least five mils of fluid in that knee. If I swipe up and let go and the fluid rushes back, there's probably 25 to 30 mils of fluid. So we're getting up to 50, 60 times greater the amount of fluid than it actually is in the knee. The next thing we get people to do is just lift your right leg straight up and this is called a leg lift again it's just assessing quadriceps tone and condition whilst I've got Julia here we just get you to bend as far as you can excellent flexion as we would expect but a lot of people with knee injuries cannot flex uh, particularly well and we'll just bring Julia oh there's a bit of crepitus right there um, doing extension flexion whilst a patient is lying down is actually not as easy as having them sit in a chair or on the side of the bed because of the tension on the quadriceps musculature and the hamstrings musculature as well. So I prefer to do that test with them uh, sitting in a chair or on the, the side of the bed. The next thing we do, and I'm just going to bring Julia's leg up to 90 degrees, is palpation. And for meniscal pathology, it has actually been shown that the most sensitive test is joint line tenderness. More so than a McMurray's, more, tho, more so than a Thessaly, Egi's or Apley test, which we'll run through. I tend to sit on people's feet because I can then stabilise the knee. On, oh, and Dion, if you want to come around this side. On the lateral compartment, right at the front, on the lateral side of the tendon, is what we call a soft spot. And that's where we put our cut for when we do an arthroscopy, is right there. That represents the infralateral border of the kneecap, the lateral border of the patella, and the superior border of the anterior tibial, lateral tibial plateau. So in that area is the anterior root and anterior horn of the lateral meniscus. And so I just start, excuse me, palpating along the lateral joint line. The lateral joint line actually sort of tapers off. It's not straight across, it basically tapers backwards because of the posterior slope of the tibial plateau. And as I say, palpate along the lateral joint line, asking the patient if they have any pain. I then will palpate the superior tibiofibular joint and I will move that to assess stability of that. Whilst we're there, lateral epicondyle, which is where the lateral collateral ligament is attached to, fibular head, which is where the lateral collateral ligament 
inserts onto. Whilst we're here, I can feel biceps femoris and I can palpate ITB. And ITB friction syndrome is one of those sort of missed diagnoses for people with lateral sided or lateral joint line pain. Whilst we're here, I will palpate the patella tendon down to the tibial tuberosity. I'll also palpate the quadriceps tendon for the first five centimetres or so. Palpate the medial pole of the patella, palpate the lateral pole of the patella. Whilst we're here, I will do a, what we call Hoffer's squeeze test. So Hoffer's squeeze test is where I'm basically palpating the lateral Hoffer's fat pad and the medial Hoffer's fat pad. And if people have pain, that test is positive. We then come to the medial joint line. And again, that tapers backwards. From front to back, it goes inferiorly. So it's not straight across. And there is a bit of a soft spot, but it's not as pronounced as the lateral side. And I palpate there. And medial joint line tenderness for meniscal pathology has been shown as I say, to be more effective at picking up a meniscal tear than any of the other tests that we do for it.